Well, still not clear whether or not there will be British MEPs taking part in the next European parliamentary elections. But for the other 27 member states, there is now just two months to go to those polls. And a variety of new political groups have been formed to contest the seats. One founded by a former Greek finance minister, Yanis Varoufakis, it promises immediate financial changes to end austerity and fund a green future. It also wants to end Fortress Europe, opening up ways for immigration. It's called European Spring and the policy coordinator, Mr. David Adler, is standing by to talk to us now live from Greece. Mr. Adler, thanks for your time. Uh, firstly, just given our continued focus on Brexit this morning, can I ask by starting, your policy when it comes to immigration, it was a big reason that many voters in the UK said they wanted out. Your group says immigration needs to be embraced. Tell us more. I think our position on migration <clears throat> is that, by and large, this is a red herring. There is a profound economic crisis in Europe from where I'm sitting today here in, here in Athens, Greece. The problem of austerity and the explosion of unemployment, especially among the youth, has gone nowhere. And this is true across not just the south of Europe, but even in places like Germany and France where this cult of austerity prevails. It's no surprise to us then that as a response to those policies, we see an explosion of discontent as in the Gilets Jaunes, in the heartland of the European Union in France. And we see that the, the bubbling resentment toward outsiders is precisely following from, from these failed policies. So our position is for Europe to recover its humanity, to recover its sense that it must be a positive force in the world, and to be a force of welcoming these newcomers and not, not deciding on whether your birthplace should be determinant of your life chances. Indeed, Mr. Adler, and indeed speaking from Greece, which was on the forefront of a lot of those migration uh, refugees, uh, rather, and asylum seekers that arrived into the European bloc. But as you say, there's already at the start there was resentment. It's bubbling, as you put it. And from the start, a lack of solidarity on the EU side of things to, you know, help Greece, to help uh, the countries that were on the front line. You know, how are you planning to change that? Well, OK, so once again, I think we have to couch our conversation in migration in a much broader conversation of the European situation. Now, our premise is twofold. On the one hand, there is a deep, profound crisis in Europe. And these elections that you mentioned are a tremendously important historic moment as Europe fragments. The other side of that premise is that Europe's establishment parties are uniquely unfit to be handling this crisis. You mentioned the fact that there's very little solidarity among the 27 countries navigating this, this migration question. This comes as no surprise to us. The coalitions that prevail at the European level are what we call Frankenstein coalitions, lifeless parts stitched together with no coherent vision. These are real coalitions of convenience that have never sat down and thought about what it means to live in a solidaristic Europe. So our position is that the sense of solidarity is downstream from the type of transnational mobilization that we, European Spring, Europe's first transnational party, are building. Well, a lot of the, the, the political groups that sit in the European Parliament are made up of, of all the nationalities of the European Union. Uh, but as you say there, you know, your scepticism has been growing somewhat across the bloc. Do you think actually that Brexit might have had an impact on that? Could it actually, you know, push the rest of the countries to act more in unison? Well, you would think so, and yet we still see that these coalitions are really dominated by national concerns that are then instrumentalized on the European level. And we can see this playing out in those same Brexit negotiations, the way that any given country's response to Brexit is, in, is largely response to their own domestic concerns. So I'm highly skeptical that even in President Macron's great letter to the Europeans, uh, this actually represents a genuine heartfelt gesture towards transnationalism because so much of politics at the European level is about dishing out, oh, you get an MEP here, you get an MEP here, we all get nice private cars. So our position is that you've got to build a different kind of transnational mobilization to really, really instantiate that solidarity that says to Germans, your interests are not zero-sum with Greeks. Your interests are not zero-sum with Italians. And says that across the entire EU. So that's really the, the motivation for our Democracy in Europe movement, so-called DiEM25, building a real party, European Spring, that can say, look, we're not transnational insofar as we have Germans and we have Italians and we have Portuguese. We're transnational is that we're standing behind one vision for Europe, one common New Deal for Europe, with many of the policies you mentioned up front at the uh, outset of the program. OK, well, with two months to go, we'll be keeping a close eye on how that idea plays out among the voters. Mr. David Adler, thanks so much for your time and speaking to us live from Greece. Mr. David